Okay. We're going to look at today the summary of what we're going to look at in this presentation. Okay. So first of all, we're going to look at some barriers to giving a successful presentation. Um, we'll be looking at some language for preparing to give effective presentations, summarizing the content of a pre presentation. Uh, we'll also look at some factors which will contribute to making a presentation more focused from the audience's viewpoint, and we'll examine some language to talk about presentations. Okay, so first of all, what is a presentation? Okay, um, there are two definitions of a presentation, um, but first, can you write in the box, what, what is a presentation for you? What, what do you do in a presentation? You can just write that in um, the question box. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I see here uh, speaking in front of a group of an audience about a specific subject. Right, that's good. Okay, that's coming from um, uh, Rabab. Right, okay. Anything else? Okay. Okay, let's look at the definition of what is a presentation. Okay, the first definition is that it's a talk giving information about something. For example, the speaker gave an interesting presentation on urban transport. Okay, so this is a talk. And the second definition is an occasion when prizes, qualifications are formally given to those who have won or achieved them. Okay, so the presentation of prizes and certificates will take place in the main hall. Okay, so those are the two um, definitions of a presentation. So where do people give presentations? Can you write that down in the question box? Where do people, where can people give a presentation? Mm -hmm. Okay, Rob is answered in workshops in a job place, right? And Anastasia uh, at a school or at work. Right. Okay. That's good. You can give a presentation at work, at a university, in a conference hall. Okay. And uh, did any of you uh, ever give a presentation? So if you have given a presentation, what was the subject of your last presentation? You can just write that in the box. What was the subject of your last presentation if you, if you gave one? Okay. So George wrote entrepreneurship and Marjorie wrote in the human resource budget. Okay. And I also see Anna wrote Anastasia in a lecture. Right. Okay, so I see that many of you have given presentations, so that's very good, um, and you already have an idea. So we'll move on now to let's look at reasons for holding presentations. Okay, now if you look at this picture, you're going to listen to a, you're going to watch a short video, and you're going to try to answer these questions. Who is the presenter? Why is the presentation being held? What exactly is he going to talk about? And what conclusions does he draw from the presentation? Okay. Um, so I'm going to try to. Um, I can't do it. Okay. We'll see if it's possible uh, to put it in the chat box. So let me just check. 
one minute. Uh, okay, Anton, uh, just sorry, Anton, are you there? Yes. Okay, let's see if it goes into the chat box. Okay, if you look into your chat box, you should see a YouTube video. Okay, and if you click that link, you should be able to watch the video. Okay, so you'll see that in the chat box. You'll watch the video and try to get these answers. Okay, so if you watch the video, it's a short video, um, does anybody know who the presenter is? Who is the presenter? Does anybody know? Right, okay, Marjorie answered Dilbert, okay. So if anybody doesn't know, Dilbert is um, a cartoon character who is a businessman, who portrays a businessman who frequently makes mis business mistakes or errors at work. Okay, so if you looked at the presentation, uh, was it clear why is the presentation being held or what is he going to talk about? Um, did you find any information from this presentation? Was it a good presentation in your opinion? Right. Okay, Rabab answered no, yes. Right, that's correct. So it was not a good presentation, okay? Um, it was, uh, right, George also, um, it was not clear why the presentation was being held or what he's going to talk about, okay? And of course, we also couldn't draw any conclusions, okay? So it's important um, to have the reason for the presentation. And there are some reasons people go to presentations. Okay, to get information. Uh, so look at some of the re these reasons and tell me what is the best reason why people go to a presentation? To get information, to go on a journey, to be entertained because they were told to for a free lunch. Okay, right, that's very good. Rob also made a point that, the, that Dilbert's presentation had no information. So that's a really good point. Marjorie Wright, to get information. People uh, go to a presentation to get information, okay? And that is something that you have to think about when creating uh, your presentations, okay? Okay, next we're going to look at the audience. The audience is very important, and it's important to know who your audience is. So um, in your last presentation, think about your last presentation, and what's the biggest audience you have had? can just write that down. Okay, Anastasia said 15 people, mm -hmm. and Rob up six students. Okay, mm -hmm. 18. Yes, so that's quite a, a big number. Okay, so there, when you give a presentation, there are some important factors to consider um, about your audience. Okay, and we're going to take a look at them now. So, first of all, the audience may be listening to you in their second, third, or fourth language. Okay, so that could pose a problem. Okay, they may be hungry or tired because they've traveled a long way to the presentation. So they may feel jet lagged, they may be a bit tired to, to listen. Another important factor is that um, it's important to know who your audience is because there may be some people who are of higher status a more important position in the company. Okay, so you want to know who the audience is. And there also may be some people in the room who are experts on what you are presenting. Okay. 
Um, the mood in the room could be positive or negative. And finally, it's important to remember memory and attention. Okay? So the way that you structure the presentation should take these factors into account. Okay? You should always think about your audience. Okay? So let's look here at a graph. And this is a graph of remembering information. Okay? So information rapidly decays over time. So if you go to a presentation and you remember six pieces of ideas, the number will decay over time. So that's something that you need to remember because you do not want to overload the people. You want to try to minimize the information and choose the good points to keep the audience um, interested and to attract their memory and attention. Okay? Also, if you take a look at this graph, you can see that the people will usually remember more at the beginning and at the end of a presentation. So this is why you need a very strong beginning uh, and you need an ending with a summary which reviews the points of the presentation. And this can help the memory. Okay? So this is coming from cognitive psychology about memory and attention. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some tips, okay, about um, giving a good presentation. Okay. Uh, can you just write in the in the, the box uh, any tips that you know of for uh, a good presentation? Since you have done presentations, are there any tips that you can think of offhand? Some advice or tips for giving a presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, Olga. I see Olga's arrived. Okay. Right. Just in general, some tips. Right. Okay. To summarize, to use humor. Right. That's good, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rob, tell a joke. Very good. Yes. Right. If you tell a joke, it can break the ice, okay, and you know make the people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's some. Those are some good points. Okay. Let's look at some other things. Um, it's important, as I said before, to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay. Uh, also, to decide on the level of formality. So you want to know if it's going to be a decide if it's a formal or an informal presentation. Okay. Um, introduce yourself. Tell some information about yourself. Um, and then you want to tell the story. So start with some basic information. Okay. Um, tell the audience the destination, why they're there, and take them through the steps. Okay. So it's like a story. Uh, at the end, review your conclusions. Okay. You want to make sure that the audience takes away the necessary message and give a summary and conclusion um, at the end. Okay. Finally, at the very end, of course, you can take questions from the floor. Okay. So these are some tips or advice for giving a presentation, as well as what you said. Telling a joke is a good idea also, and also uh, summarizing. Okay. This is the presentation journey. Okay. So here we have some points. Okay. Decide what you want to say to your audience. Okay, make sure you choose and prepare the equipment to make sure your presentation is interesting. Find out exactly who you're talking to. Practice your presentation and be sure that the presentation is well structured. Check the room you are going to talk in. Okay. All right. You're going to listen now to a presentation. Okay. Um, and while you listen, you're going to match these ideas to the sections of the presentation. Okay, so when I'm finished um, doing the presentation, I'm going to ask you to match these ideas with the certain sections. Okay? Um, and also try to just listen to what is the presentation about. Okay. All right. Welcome. Giving a presentation can be a nerve-wracking experience for many of us, no matter how small or large the audience. 
Today, we'll look at some things you can do to prepare yourself to give an effective presentation. One which will keep attention focused and make sure that you get your content across and remembered. First of all, it's important to know your audience. How many people are going to be there? Where are they from? Are they external to your company or colleagues? What information and feelings do they want to lead with? How much do they already know? Secondly, the venue is important too. Make sure you visit it prior to your presentation date. Ask yourself, where will they sit? Where will I stand? What do they already know? How will I organize the space? Where will I place any equipment I'm using? Make sure your objectives are clear in your mind. This will help you prepare effective, interesting, and informative material. Don't forget you want your audience to remember something informative and interesting. This will also help you to design a well-organized presentation, and a well-organized presentation is easier to understand. Your audience will want to leave having learned something useful and new. Next, make sure the presentation has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Number or bullet point separate points as this will allow the audience to follow what you are selling, saying. A well-organized presentation is much easier to understand. However, remember that you shouldn't read these points to your audience. You should speak to your audience, not the board. There are many kinds of audiovisual aids you can use, from the whiteboard or flip chart to Microsoft's latest PowerPoint package or other software. Whatever you choose to use, make sure it suits your audience's needs. And be sure that the material is interesting. Finally, have some notes of your most important points, perhaps on cards if this helps. And once again, remember to speak to your audience. It's a good idea to practice your presentation out loud so you can check your timing. Maybe in front of someone you know, ask a colleague to give you feedback, and don't be afraid to ask for advice. OK, so this was a presentation. Um, if you look, if you can write in the, um, in the answer, what was this presentation about? Right, okay, Marjorie wrote about effective presentation, mm -hmm. yes, and Rob, tips to make a good presentation, right, okay, also Anastasia, mm -hmm. okay, right, so that is correct, yes, this was about um, what you have to consider, mm -hmm. those are good points. This, uh, this presentation was about how to give it uh, an effective presentation, right. And we're going to try to look now at the presentation, and we're going to match the sections with the different um, phrases. So let's take a look here at the presentation. OK, here it is. And I'll go back to the slide before. So remember, I just want to let you know that all of the vocabulary and uh, the answers to the questions are going to be sent to you in a PDF file in a few days. OK, so you will receive the vocabulary as well as the answers to the questions. OK, so if we look at the first expression, it says it's important to know your audience. OK, so which, um, which one of these would, uh, would, would match with that section? Right, Anastasia, OK, see, right. Um, find out exactly who you're talking to. Okay. Okay. The next um, expression in red is, secondly, the venue is important too. The venue. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Sorry. Yes, I see it's Anne. Okay. Sorry, Anne. I, I, your name was uh, cut off from the list. OK. Um, OK. Right, OK. OK, secondly, the venue is important too. Right, OK. 
So which of these phrases would that go with? Okay, the word is the venue. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anna wrote, uh, Anne wrote um, F, check the room you're going to talk in. Right, so venue is always the, the location or the place. Okay, um, the next one is make certain your objectives are clear in your mind. Okay. Right. Okay. So Anne wrote and and um, okay. So how about wrote E? Um, be sure the presentation is well structured. Okay. Okay. Well, the objectives could be uh, make make certain your objectives are clear. It could be A, right, decide what you want to say to your audience. That's your objectives, right. But of course also E, your presentation should be well structured, okay. All right, but probably yes, decide what you want to say. That's the aims or goal, the objectives, okay. Um, the next one is a well-organized presentation is easier to understand. Right, okay, right. E, make sure that the presentation is well structured, okay, well structured or well organized. Okay, um, there are many kinds of uh, audiovisual aids you can use. Right, okay, make sure you choose and prepare the equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And be sure the material is interesting. Right, okay. B could be make sure you check the room, the equipment, and make your presentation interesting. Right. It can also be E. It's well structured. Mm -hmm. And finally, ask a colleague to give you feedback. Okay, ask your colleague to give you feedback. Um, okay, we say Anna or A, E, and C. Okay, feedback. Um, feedback, well, also C, Olga, okay. Find out exactly who you're talking to. Okay, feedback is um, comments or ideas or opinions how you do your presentation. So it, it could also, you know, really it could be D, practice your presentation. Okay, if you practice your presentation in front of a friend or a colleague, uh, then you can get some feedback, comments about how it is. Okay, okay. so um, all of these answers will be coming to you on the PDF file. Okay, so you'll have those to check. And you, you will also see the presentation. Okay, all right, so this is a very well-structured and organized presentation. And there was some language that we used. But first, let's review the presentation journey, OK? First, plan ahead. Structure your presentation, OK? It's important to have a structure to it, OK? Next, understand and connect with your audience, OK? Use visual aids to underline your message, OK? You can use PowerPoint, whiteboard or any other type of visual aids. Use effective presentation techniques. Project a positive attitude. And then anticipate likely questions. OK? So it's always a good idea to um, have some answers ready for some likely questions that might come up at the end of the presentation. OK? Okay, so we have some language that we use in presentations. And I'm going to, related to presentations, I'm going to dictate, I'm going to say these words twice. Uh, just try to remember these words, okay? So listen carefully and then try to remember them. Um, I'm going to ask you to write them in the box um, 
in a few minutes. Okay, so just listen carefully. Audience, audience, audiovisual aids, audiovisual aids, be informative, be informative, structure, structure, Venue, venue, objectives, objectives, well organized, well organized, feedback, Feedback, body language, body language, and signposting, signposting. Okay, so can you write now um, any words that you can remember? Can you write them down in the box? Right, okay. Marjorie wrote audience. Be informative, right? Rob objectives, okay. Menu, structure, venue. Okay, good, Anne. You've got many of them. Audience. A V A to be informative, well organized, objectives, right? Feedback, okay, and body language, right? So, okay, that's very good. Okay, all of these words that you wrote down, all of these are important um, in relation to a presentation. Okay, so let's go through them here. So we have audience. Okay, so it's very important to know your audience. Okay. Um, it's important to know who the audience will be, if it will be a formal or informal presentation, if the audience will be um, experts in the field, um, and what kind of people they will be. Okay, audiovisual aids, as I said before, is also very important. This can enhance your presentation, um, so you can use PowerPoint, whiteboard, or other types of visual aids. Okay. Of course, it's important to be informative. The presentation should contain information, okay, and have a structure to it. Venue, venue is the location or the place, okay, and that's important to always check and to check that the equipment is working properly, okay. The objectives, which is also the aim of the presentation, okay, this is something to consider when you are creating the presentation and that it is well organized, okay? Feedback is very important, okay? Feedback is the comments or the opinions of the people who have listened to the presentation, okay? So you can get feedback uh, after you do a presentation from the audience, and you can also practice your presentation before and get some feedback from a colleague or from a friend after they have listened to it. This can help you to improve future presentations. Okay, and then finally, um, body language is important. Okay, body language is the eye contact and the uh, hand gestures that you use. Okay, and of course, yes, we have signposting. Does anybody know what signposting means? Um, this is an important part of a presentation. So could you write down any signposting? Anybody know the meaning? Okay, Marjorie wrote now. How about anybody else? Okay. Drawings, okay, well, drawings, um, Anna is uh, probably drawings would be more with related to the audiovisual aids, 
Okay, you could put in a drawing. Signposting is actually um, is an effective method, uh, a very effective method or technique to help the reader follow what you are saying. It's like guides. It's like a guideline, um, and it's language. For example, first, first of all, uh, to begin with. Okay, that's how you begin a presentation. Or second, next, and at the end we use to summarize in conclusion. Okay, all right, I'll just write some of them down, if I can do it here. Okay, I'll put them in the chat box. Okay, so we use this um, language, first of all, first, next, then, finally to connect the sentences and to help the listener uh, follow what we are saying. Okay, it's like a guide. Okay, and that's signposting. So that's also very important um, when giving a presentation. Okay? Okay, right. And uh, structuring aids, yes. Okay. Okay, so let's review um, a presentation how the structure, the, the journey. It starts with the opening remarks and the introduction. Okay. Then would be the content, which is the material you are presenting. The summary. You always want to summarize and review your points. Have a conclusion at the end. Okay. Often we can say in conclusion or to conclude. And the closing remarks, where we thank the audience for attending. And finally, we take questions from the floor. Okay. Okay. So if you look at the words, try to remember the words on the list. Okay. We're going to try to put them in some sentences in the next slide. Okay. So I'll just read them again. Audience, audiovisual aids, the informative structure, venue, objectives, well organized, feedback body language, and signposting. Okay. Okay. So what, what word, if you can try to remember, um, could go into this sentence? Secondly, the is important too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Audiovisual aid structure. And a road structure, right? Okay, yes. The signposting, body language. Okay, that's. You all have given uh, good answers. Everybody has chosen a different, uh, different word. So, as you can see, all of these things are important. Yes, the body language, the, um, the venue, the structure, um, everything. The audiovisual aids. Okay. Um, but also the venue, yes, the venue is important, the location, okay. Um, make sure you are clear in your mind, okay. Before giving a presentation, you should make sure this is clear in your mind. Your ideas, objectives, right, Anna, okay. Right, ideas and objectives. Another word for objective is your uh, aim, okay, or your goal, what you would like the people or the audience to go away with. Okay. Uh, um, blank presentation is much easier to understand. Okay. So can you remember a word? A well-structured. Right. A well-structured presentation is much easier to understand. Okay. We can use well-structured or well-organized. Mm -hmm. There are many kinds of uh, that you can use. So in a presentation, you can use many kinds of, to enhance it, to make it more interesting. Right. Yes, Rabab, uh, audiovisual aids. Mm -hmm. Olga also wrote that. Yes, this is very in good to enhance the presentation and to keep the audience's attention. Okay. You may find that you have some um, types of listeners who need to see visuals. Okay. If they just listen, they, they may get tired or, you know, even fall asleep. So by having some uh, visuals, it can enhance it and keep everybody interested. Okay. Uh, it's important to know your... Yeah. 
Good, right, yes, audience. Yes, it's always important to know your audience and uh, who the people are that you're going to present to. Okay. Um, ask a colleague to give you, so maybe before you give a presentation to the audience, you might ask the colleague to give you, right, Anna, feedback. Yes, to give feedback back. And that way you can improve uh, the next time when you do a presentation. Feedback is very useful. Okay. And finally, be sure that the material is Okay, you want to make sure that the material that you're using in the presentation is um, okay, I'll get right well organized, yes, that's important, and informative, right, okay, also. You want to make sure the material is informative, giving information. So if you can remember in the beginning of our webinar, um, the most important reason to give a presentation is to give information. Okay, so you want to make sure the material is informative. Okay, so that's very good. Okay, so you'll get all of these answers on a PDF uh, file in a few days. Okay, now I'm going to read to you the beginning of a presentation. Okay, because in our next webinar, uh, we're going to continue talking about the beginning, the middle, and the end of presentations. Okay, so just listen. Here is the beginning of a presentation, and we will look at this um, further in the next webinar. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Nice to see so many of you here today. I hope you're all comfortable and can hear me okay. The subject of this presentation is the marketing plan for the next three years. Basically, there are three main points I want to cover today. If you look at the first slide, you can see them listed here. First, I'm going to talk about the new product range aimed at the Asian market. Secondly, I'll talk about each of the products and our ideas for taking them to market. Finally, I'd like to talk briefly about our competition. Okay, so let's get started. As I said, the first point is our product range. Okay, so this is the beginning of a presentation. Um, if we look at this, let's just uh, examine it a little bit. Um, what is the audiovisual aid that they, they use in this beginning part? Okay, right, okay, right, that's good. They use the, the slide is the audiovisual aid. Yes, that's, that's audiovisual, the slide, right. And they also use signposting, right. Um, and can you, just, can you just write down any, any signposting language that you've seen? Yes, right, Anna wrote first, secondly, and finally, right, okay, yes, Marjorie wrote finally, right, that's good, okay, so you can see in this beginning part that they use um, some signposting to connect and to connect the sentences together as well as audiovisual, okay, and this is the beginning of a presentation, okay, there was also the uh, objective which they clearly stated by saying the subject. Okay. Okay, so next time we will have a look at how to structure presentations. Okay, in our next webinar we're going to continue and we're going to uh, continue with this idea of how to uh, produce the beginning, the middle, and the end of a presentation. Okay? Okay, so are there any questions? Okay, if there are any questions you can write them um, in the in the box, if there's any questions. Okay, right, not for now, right? Okay. Okay, so Rob wrote a question, how to manage, how to manage the time, right. 
Yes. Well, that's also a very good point that you brought up. Okay. It's very important to manage the time um, with the presentation. So one way could be to practice the presentation before giving it. Okay. And that way, uh, by practicing it in front of um, a colleague or from a friend, you can see um, how to do the presentation and how much time you need for each part. Okay. That's probably the best way. Um, and then, of course, while you're giving the presentation, it's important to uh, be aware of the time. Okay, so if you start out too quickly, maybe then at the, you may have to slow down. Okay, you always need to be aware of the time. Okay, and that's a very important point. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Oh, okay, Robo, it's, is it okay to see, to, to see your watch? Okay, is it okay to look at your watch? Okay, well, probably um, if you're going to look at your watch, uh, it's, it could be okay, but you don't want the audience to, to notice that. So maybe you can have a watch or, you know, look at it sometimes, but without your audience seeing it, you know, just to be cautious of the time. Okay, so it's always important to make sure that you're not going um, too long or that it's going too quickly. Okay, so that could be a good point. You can have your watch on, but you don't want to keep looking at it, okay, uh, so that the audience sees that, right. Okay, any other questions uh, about um, preparing the presentation or starting up a presentation? No? Okay. Well, you may think of some other questions. Um, you will receive the PDF with the vocabulary and with the answers from today's webinar. Um, you can take a look at that. And we will have another uh, webinar uh, continuing this topic of presentations. Okay, so you may think of any other questions um, after, and you can ask also next time. Okay. Um, so, okay. okay, so I'd like to thank you for your participation. Thank you for coming today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the, the webinar about presentations. And I look forward to seeing you again um, soon. Okay, thank you.